If you love tactics and chess, then you're going to love this game. This is between Wesley So and Grandmaster Gukesh of India. This was played at the Tata Steel India Rapid. 25 minutes for each side with a 10 second increment. And once the tactics get going in this game, they never really stop. Wesley So with the white pieces begins with d4. Gukesh plus, plays knight to f6. c4, e6. Knight to c3 and bishop to b4. It starts out as a, a Nimzo Indian, but it does transpose here. Knight to f3, and there are a few moves black can play. b6 is possible, c5 is possible, but d5 is what Gukesh plays, and this transposes into a Rogozin, which is very topical at the top levels right now. I've covered quite a few games with this Rogozin. Basically, it's a queen's gambit declined with the bishop aggressively posted on b4. Queen to a4 check. Now, this is a double attack. The queen attacks the bishop at b4, it's the king at e8, so black is basically forced to play knight to c6. That blocks the check and defends the bishop at b4. e3 castles and bishop to d2. Black would like to bring the knight in. Excuse me. Black would like to bring the knight into the e4 square. Uh, so bishop to d2 neutralizes the pin on the knight at c3 and rook to e8. Preparing at some point to play e5. When a knight blocks the c pawn in a queen's pawn opening. Usually the e-pawn is where your primary pawn break is going to come from, and that's something black really is going to have to utilize in this game. a3 hits the bishop, the bishop retreats to f8, and now rook to d1. Anticipating that the center is going to be opened, placing the rook opposite the queen. h6, and here Wesley So plays h3. I'm not 100% sure why he plays this now, uh, but... It'll probably be useful later at the very least. And here Gukesh takes the pawn on c4, and this is the game's novelty. Uh, but it allows Wesley So to just develop his bishop with one tempo. And uh, after this, white does get something of an initiative. Gukesh plays e5. We talked about this e5 pawn break being key to black's position. And now queen to b3. So tactics are beginning. The bishop is aiming at f7. It would take with check and pick up the rook at e8, so black has to do something about that. Gukesh plays queen to d7 to defend the f7 pawn laterally. Knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d e5, and now we see there could be a discovery down this d file. And now rook takes e5. A one strategy white could have used here that would probably have been effective is to play f4, hitting that rook, and when the rook moves, to castle, and then to advance the E and F pawns together and use those pawns to attack. What he decides to do is play the knight to E2, and that allows the bishop to go to C3 to hit that rook, and the knight can post it uh, F4 or D4 later. And here Gukesh plays a very strong move. B5. The pawn is defended by the queen and the rook, so he gains a tempo by hitting the bishop and then opens up the B7 square for his own bishop to develop powerfully down the long diagonal. The bishop goes to d3, and now queen to c6. He uses his queen to attack the g2 pawn, and instead of defending the pawn, Wesley so counterattacks with bishop to c3, hitting the rook, but Gukesh just moves the rook to g5. Now the rook and the queen are aiming at the g2 pawn, so knight to f4 is played to defend g2, but then knight to h5. Wants to remove the defender of the g2 pawn, so this rook and Rook and queen can continue their attack on g2. So queen to c2. A very, very sneaky move. If black does something, say, imprecise, then he will lose. Let's say black plays a6. Then in that case, bishop to h7 check, which forces the king to h8, and then boom, bishop to g7 check, unveiling the queen on the queen at c6, and black would be totally lost. So black cannot play a passive move here, otherwise bishop h7 would just win the game. So he plays the move bishop to b7, piling on to this pawn and also defending the queen, so the queen would not hang after bishop h7 check. So Wesley plays f3. That blunts the diagonal. Uh, it weakens, it, it has some control over e4, but it weakens the pawn here at e3 and Gukesh immediately goes after it. Rook to e8, attacking the weakness. As soon as the weakness develops, he attacks it, and Wesley so decides to give it up. He plays uh, castling, giving up the e3 pawn, uh, and hoping to have enough counterplay with his actively placed pieces. 
Uh, but at the moment, uh, his knight does hang. He doesn't move the knight, um, although he could play knight to h5. This would have been a good move. And after rook h5, bishop to d4 with an attack on a7 and the rook on e3, and he would get his pawn back in that uh, situation. But instead, he plays h4, keeping the game sharp and tactical and counterattacking the rook at g5. And here, Gukesh plays a move that looks quite strong, queen to c5. And of course, uh, the threat is if white, say, takes the rook at g5, then just rook e2 with a discovered check against the king, and this rook would end up grabbing the queen, king moves, rook takes c2, and black wins. However, remember that tactic we looked at with the bishop to h7 check? It doesn't look like it works at the moment because the queen is defended laterally by the rook at g5. Nevertheless, bishop to h7 check is what Wesley plays, and it's quite effective here. King to h8, and now you don't take on g7, that would just lose, but you play bishop to d4, that's what he plays. Counterattacking, he attacks the queen and the rook. Well, you say, well, but can't just the queens get traded off? Yes, they can, but now there's a double attack. This pawn at h4 is still hitting this rook at g5. That, that issue was never resolved. And so the rook at g5 is attacked, and the rook at e3 is attacked, and Wesley so wins material. Knight takes knight, pawn takes. So now uh, white has a, a rook in exchange for a knight and a pawn. Rook back to e6, bishop to a7, grabbing another pawn. And now it's a full exchange, a clean exchange advantage. Bishop to d6 is played. Black cannot take that pawn because of rook to d8, pinning this bishop. And of course, you just win it. You don't want to do that. So the bishop goes to d6, rook f to e1. Wesley so centralizes his rooks and offers an exchange of rooks, which he would love to play because he's up material. hg5, getting one of those pawns back, but now bishop to b3. Hitting the rook, aiming at f7. The rook moves to f6 to defend the f7 pawn, but the other bishop, now, boom, comes in, and that hits the rook as well. These bishops are really sweeping and causing a lot of trouble. The rook goes to h6. Now bishop to f7, another pawn, and g4. Now, I will say this. You look at all of black's pieces, and they are all well-placed. The bishop's aim at the king's side. The knight is strong at f4. The rook is on the open file. But Wesley has that material advantage. Can he withstand black's pressure here? Pawn takes pawn. And not only does that get a pawn, but the threat of g5 is quite a problem for black. Bishop takes g2, g5 hits the rook, the rook goes to h3, rook e8 check, forcing the king forward. Now g6 check, if black takes the, the pawn with the knight, then he would lose his bishop. So he can't do that, he has to advance his king. Rook to h8 check, king g5, rook takes rook, bishop takes rook, but now bishop takes g7. And this pawn becomes quite strong in this position. Bishop to g4, counterattacks the rook at d1. The bishop goes back to c3. And here, bishop to h5. What if he just takes the rook? I mean, the rook is hanging. Then g7. And the pawn cannot be stopped. White would promote. So bishop to h5. Now the pawn advances. He would just play, take the bishop at f7 and control the queening square. So that's the idea behind that. Bishop to d2, pins the knight at f4. Bishop takes pawn. Bishop takes f4, check. Bishop takes f4. And now rook to d5, check. What he wants to do is to push the king away from its defense of the bishop at g6 so he can win that piece. So the king wants to stay in contact with this bishop at g6. The king moves to h6, so he goes ahead and takes it. And in this position, instead of just taking with the king, and black would, uh, white would just win the pawn at b5 and be completely winning. He instead plays c6, counterattacking the rook and defending the pawn. And the rook can't play to this square to defend the bishop or to this square because the dark squared bishop controls it. So after c6, rook to f5, counterattacks the bishop, bishop to e3, check, king to f1. Now king takes g6. So is this a holdable position? For black, can he down an exchange with two pawns on one side of the board hold? Rook f3, 
Bishop to c1 attacks the pawn at b2. The pawn moves to b4. The a3 pawn is defended laterally by the rook. Bishop to b2, king to e2. And you notice the big problem for black is that this rook on f3 creates this line. And the black king just can't cross it. And that means white's king can come over here and cause all kinds of trouble. Bishop to d4, king to d3, and now c5. Uh, black's real hope here is that the pawns get traded off, and he's left with a pure king and rook versus king and bishop ending. But after king e4, king g5, pawn takes pawn, and in this position, black resigned. The reason being, after bishop takes pawn, then rook to f5 check, double attack on the king and the bishop, and the game would be over. Just a lot of tactics, just kind of cascading down a really, really fun game. I hope you enjoyed this game. By the way, if you want to see another terrific game from Wesley So, I have a great one for you right here. I know you're going to love it. See you again soon.